Okay, so one last question here about uh, this relationship between slope and optimization. So we want to know is the function cosine cubed of x times sine of 5x increasing, decreasing, or neither at the point x equals pi. So the idea is we're going to take the derivative of this function. If the derivative, if the derivative is positive, we'll say the function's increasing. If the derivative is negative, we'll say it's decreasing. And if the derivative equals 0, we would say, well, it's neither. All right, so um, let's just start taking our derivative. We have to be a little careful here. We're going to have to use the product rule and the chain rule. I'm going to rewrite this one time. So I'm just going to write this as cosine of x quantity cubed. And then we're multiplying that by sine of 5x. I like to just pull the exponent out just to remind myself again that I'm doing the chain rule. So, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is the product rule. That's kind of the first thing that I think about is, well, we've got multiplication. So, okay, so let's do the derivative of cosine x cubed. So the 3 would come out front. We would leave the inside alone, take 1 away. Um, and then we have to take the derivative of the inside, which would be negative sine x. Let's see. And then I'm going to leave the sine of 5x alone. So then we have a plus for our product rule. Now I'm going to leave the cosine of x cubed alone. The derivative of sine 5x, okay, we'll have to use the chain rule again. The derivative of sine is cosine. And then we have to take the derivative of the inside, so that'll be times 5. So we could start simplifying all this down. Um, there's really, I guess, not a tremendous amount of simplification to do, honestly. Uh, but So what I'm going to do now is just plug in our point. So we wanted to know what was happening at pi. So, well, we would get f prime of pi. So we would get 3 times cosine uh, squared of pi. So I'm just kind of pulling the exponent back in, times negative sine of pi, times sine of 5 pi. And then we would get plus cosine of pi cubed times cosine of 5 pi times 5. OK, so um, either you got a calculator or you uh, hopefully remember some good old unit circle stuff. Um, so if you're at the angle pi, so pi and pi, um, if you're at the angle pi, we're sitting over here at the point on the unit circle of negative 1, 0. Uh, sine of pi equals the y-coordinate, which is 0. So this term right here, uh, we would get negative 0 or 0. So I don't even really care about evaluating the other ones because I'm going to get 3 times some number times 0 times some number. Well, that first number is going to equal 0. Well, let's see. Cosine of pi, again, we said cosine of pi. Um, is going to equal, in this case, so cosine equals the x-coordinate, which will be negative 1. So we'll get negative 1 cubed. Cosine of uh, 5 pi, well, if you go around, that's 2 pi. If we go around another time, that's 4 pi. And then another halfway would be 5 pi. So cosine of 5 pi uh, is, again, going to put you at the same place on the circle. And so cosine of 5 pi will be negative 1. And then we're multiplying that by 5. Well, negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times negative 1. That's just going to be positive 1 times 5. And hey, we get 5. And since the derivative is positive, since the derivative is positive, again, that's the important thing. It doesn't really matter what number it is, other than it's a positive number. So since it's a positive number, we would just go back and say that the original function is increasing at that point. So again, obviously you could graph this uh, to try to see it, but you know, without a calculator, I sure as heck wouldn't want to try to graph that. It would be, uh, you know, a lot to me, a lot of plotting points. And ultimately, this is you know kind of where we're headed anyway to find maximums and minimums and increasing, decreasing. You want to be able to do this trick of taking the derivative and uh, just plugging in points and saying, hey, is it positive, negative, uh, or does it equal zero?